is it's a great pleasure to be able to uh, talk to you uh, about uh, an integrative approach towards cancer care. And um, I'd like to thank uh, your uh, president, Anna, who, who's a, a very active person in the integrative medical world. Thank you, Anna. Uh, well, this is Australia. We've got a lot of famous uh, actors, Nicole Kidman there, Hugh Jackman and Kate Blanchett and Russ, Russell Crowe with the Gladiator, some of you might know, Crocodile Dundee, and of course the kangaroos and koalas, etc. Opera House. The, um, it's, uh, I want to firstly just talk about what is integrative medicine. And integrative medicine is all of good medicine, really. But it does have a major interest in the cause of the, the disease. Rather than just diagnosis and writing a prescription, you're actually also interested in why did this person get cancer? Uh, the patient becomes a major participant in getting better. It's not like the patient is there, you give them a prescription or do an operation and off they go. It's also about making the patient as healthy as possible. And I'll mention this later and I'll give you evidence for that. But there's good evidence to show that a, a, a healthy cancer patient will do far better than a non-healthy cancer patient. And uh, hence the very least that one can do is to make the patient as healthy as possible. In Australia, like most developing uh, and developed countries, and the more educated people become, the more they're interested in their health and in particular, what they can do in order to prevent disease. And uh, on the other hand too, the health industry is also growing rather than the disease industry, which is to do with selling drugs. At the, the National Institute of Integrative Medicine, we have uh, 25 to 30 uh, doctors and a number of other uh, clinicians uh, in uh, uh, the naturopaths and Chinese medicine, etc. We, the, of course, integrative medicine is really the only type of medicine for chronic illness, which is complicated illness. And uh, we uh, do have cancer therapies, which I will be talking about, intravenous therapies. We have integrative psychiatry, rather than focus on just writing a lot of uh, uh, antidepressants, the integrative psychiatrist also practices all the aspects of medicine that could be helpful. We've got NIM kids, and one of the key reasons for establishing this in Australia, we're the second highest users of antibiotics uh, in children in the first year of life. Every second child is given an antibiotic unnecessarily for the flu and the cold. And the antibiotics don't kill viruses, but they do kill your microbiome, which is a, a key factor leading to Australian children having the highest allergy rates. We've uh, established a pain clinic uh, we're uh, have, and also in the process of establishing, establishing a, a mental health uh, centre. Integrative oncology. I'll, I'll be going through a typical consult that I would do and uh, through that journey I will be presenting you information, detailed information as well in the time that's allocated. Mind-body medicine is, is really the most important area that I start with you basically are unlikely to get a cancer unless you're the sort of person that is sensitive enough to pick up stresses and traumas uh, and haven't got the opportunity to unload the pressures and stresses. Adequate sunlight, we'll mention adequate sleep. It's absolutely essential to find out whether your patient's sleeping well and if, because if they're not sleeping well, you may as well forget about all the other therapies. Exercise. Uh, healthy food, supplements. We'll also look at some special investigations like live blood analysis and special cancer uh, diagnostic techniques like CTC, circulating tumor cells. 
uh, and uh, looking at sensitivity testing in cancer. The additional therapies, uh, for example, supplements, intravenous nutrients, hypothermia, etc., we will also mention. Mind body medicine. Now, this really is the most important component to do with virtually any chronic illness. And uh, I have drawn this flow diagram here, which looks so uh, complicated, really, but it's not. At the top, we've got the mind. The mind, and uh, which, and if you pick up storage, in other words, you pick up stresses and worries, that gives you stress and depression, which in turn then affects the body. And then we have PNI, which is psychoneuroimmunology, it affects your immunity. So you get an immune suppression. On the other hand, we get an elevation of the stress hormones through psychoneuroendocrinology. But the brain can also ha have an effect on the, our microbiome. The microbiome can have an effect on the brain. We've seen earlier this year that depressed people were given fecal transplant from non-depressed people and their depression got better. So cortisol, of course, can further depress your immunity. Uh, cortisol and growth hormone get together and give you insulin resistance so the body produces more insulin. Uh, insulin can stimulate cancer growth. Growth hormone can stimulate ca cancer growth and so can prolactin. And if your immunity is not working well, well, watch out. Now, stress reduction, storage, excessive storage. Uh, and what we really need to do is to be able to unload the storage. Over the last year or so, it has become clear to me that politicians almost never get cancer. And I've come to the conclusion that the majority of, of them aren't sensitive enough, so therefore they don't pick up stresses. They don't lose lose sleep because of corona everywhere. Uh, and uh, because of their insensitivity, they're highly unlikely to develop cancer. Check your own politicians in your own country. So unloading becomes important to say a close friend uh, or in group therapy or writing about your worries. Meditation relaxation gives you a rest from your worries. Special therapies uh, like emotional uh, uh, freedom techniques uh, or emotional uh, functional freedom tapping technique. We've got an expert here in a 